Welcome to Electron Line. Metals are typically very good conductors. And the reason for that is because it's easy to ionize them. But among the metals, there are a few that are even better conductors than the others. And the reason for that is they have very low ionization energies. Take copper, for example. Copper has 29 protons in its nucleus, and therefore it typically has 29 electrons. The first two are in the innermost energy level, and so they fill up the 1s2 orbital. The next two, four, six, eight electrons are in the second energy level, and they occupy the second s orbital, and or I should say, yeah, the second s orbital, and the first p orbital, which is of course in the second energy level, so all of those um, orbitals are filled. Then the next 18 electrons will fill up the third energy level. The 3s, the 3p, and the 3d orbitals are all filled up. And that, caught, that sums up to a total of 28 electrons. And the very last electron, the 29, has nowhere to go in the first three energy levels and therefore occupies the 4s orbital all by itself. And since it's there all by itself, it's actually quite readily removed. The ionization energy is 7.72 electron volts, which isn't a lot, so a small amount of force can knock that electron out and make it move from one, one uh, atom to the next atom inside a conductor. So if it has a low ionization energy, that means it has low resistivity, and therefore it's more easily uh, moved from one atom to another, which causes currents to flow more freely. So therefore, copper makes a very good conductor. Now, it's not the only component in the equation to determine if it's a good conductor. Notice silver and gold also have relatively low ionization energies. Silver is a better conductor than copper. It has a slightly lower ionization energy, but again, that's not the only reason. Gold is also a good conductor. It has a, a bit of a higher ionization energy, however, gold is not that bad of a conductor either. So again, there's a close relationship, but not the only equation. Now, aluminum is kind of a, an unusual one here. It has the lowest ionization energy of the four, but it's actually the worst of the four conductors. So again, there's another property there that determines conductivity. This is just one of them, but not the only one, not the only determinator. But you can see again, for both or for all three, copper, silver, and gold, we end up with a single electron in the S orbital, so easily removed. Aluminum has a single electron, I believe, in the P orbitals, and for that we'll show you another video to show you why aluminum is also a relatively good conductor and why, can easily, why that last electron can easily be removed so that it can form a good current with the flow of those free electrons. Once they're removed from the atom, they can just freely move through the conductor. And that's why these types of metals form very good conductors.